What year would you guess had the first American television series with a trans woman as one of the leading characters? I'll give you some hints. It wasn't a cable show or a streaming show. It wasn't on in the 21st century. Jimmy Carter was president of the United States and Star Wars was about to have its theatrical debut. And then somehow I began to understand that I was really a little girl. Yeah, that was Linda Gray portraying Linda Merklin, one of the show's main characters around whose story most of the show actually revolves. Travel back with me 45 years to 1977 to what I think of as the queerest show in American TV history. And one of the major topics of both my dissertation and my book, I'm talking about uh, one of Norman Lear's lesser known shows, All That Glitters. If you don't keep the pecs up, you're dead. I think you got dynamite pecs. Hello, I'm Dr. Miller, your TikTok TV historian, and this week, Norman Lear turns 100 years old. Lear is probably best known today as the showrunner or developer for network classics like All in the Family, Maude, or The Jeffersons. But my work with Norman Lear has been about his lesser known syndicated serials, or syndicated soap operas, including All That Glitters and Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. With All That Glitters, Norman wanted to go all the way back and rewrite Genesis. God created Eve, stepped back to examine her creation, took a rib from Eve and made Adam. In All That Glitters' world, women have all the power. Men are the second sex. Women are the executives. They're the sexual harassers. Men are objectified. Men are house husbands who stay at home and watch their stories. Sports. <laughs> Michael, you ready with the slide projector? Glitters' goal wasn't to show what the world would look like if women were in power, but rather to use satire and a kind of cognitive rupturing to get a better look of what is happening in our world and how women are being treated now. Everything that has been gendered in our world is up for grabs in All That Glitters is. The writers had to parse through what all gendered aspects of life they could actually flip. They thought they could just cast women as men, but for the writers, many of whom were women, it became a daily meditation on gender and sexuality because of how conflated those things are in American culture. How do you render straight white masculinity in a topsy-turvy world without making a character seem gay? Think about it. Notes from the writer's room where they're trying to figure this all out are hysterical. Here are some actual notes from the writer's room. If a character is a sports star, which sport would it be? Tennis? Volleyball? Chess? Instead of talking about pussy, you talk about puppy. Have you gotten any puppy lately? Uh, instead of a teenage girl stuffing her bra, maybe a teenage boy buys a hairpiece for his chest. You know, the kid is trying to look good in a t-shirt and he's got a few hairs hanging out. I still have so much to say about all that glitters, including more about Linda, if you're interested. Uh, let me know and stay tuned and happy birthday, Norman Lear. Like and follow and the more you'll know.